Uh, without further ado, let's bring up Mark Ostrowski. five daughters and one of them is supposed to be here she emails me three minutes ago she said I'm at the Hilton at 42nd Street where is it <laughs> can't win man you can't win so she'll be trotting in here in about what quarter of, quarter of six maybe all right where's the thing to forward we're just gonna use this all right so that was the thing ah I love it there good got this um, I own a bunch of internet sites. I'm not the best affiliate marketer in the world. I've learned over time that you can play in the game and you don't have to do all the work. But it takes a while to get to that point. And I've sold a lot of companies to the point where the day-to-day -day stuff is done by one group of people and then there's the thinkers and the planners and we kind of make it happen there. So. Let me go right into the, some of the things I wanted to say. I may have misspelled Sean's name, but let's not tell him. Sean, are you in here? Okay, good. I, I wanted to thank you guys. I used to run trade shows. In fact, my first trade show, I founded the prepaid phone card industry, and I was one of the founders of the telecom deregulation market. So everything from, oh my gosh, uh, pay phones, operator services, information services, uh, voice over the internet, voice over IP, if you will. And my first trade show was here. And we started it on a shoestring and we sold it for $35 million over at the, we ran, moved it up to the Javits Center and sold it. And one of the things I teach, and I had five grand when I started my companies. And one of the things I like to teach people in business, especially in this business, because I love the affiliate space, is that you don't have to start with a lot to make a lot. You really don't. And the internet is allowing any of you to play that game. It really, really is. And I'll go through a number of things. I'm not going to teach you about affiliate marketing. You know that. I'm not going to teach you about lead gen or domain names in markets that I still like and, and play in a little bit. I'm going to give you kind of a higher level thinking to how to make a killing as opposed to making a living because I made an income and then I made several incomes and then I sold a company and I learned how do you get to that area quicker, faster, better, smarter so that you can then do it better the next time and I did it better each time. I always put in this uh, one reminder uh, when I leave my house and this was the last trade show when I left I said to my wife would you love me if I didn't have any money? And she looked at me. She said, would I love you if you didn't have any money? I said, yeah. Would you love me if you didn't have any money? She goes, yeah, I'd love you. I'd miss you, but I'd love you. <laughs> I love the topic of information. And I, you know, it's funny. The lights, can we turn the lights down a little bit on the front end, if possible? Because they're dual color slides. It just makes it easier. I don't make a fancy, a fancy presentation because in this world, I'm just trying to get nuggets through. If any of you can remember three or four of these nuggets, it will help. The big multimedia presentation, I went to the National Speakers Association and we had a woman up there who was describing, and I can't do it justice, the younger generation who can text, watch TV, eat, use a computer, answer their, answer their email, and walk and listen to music all at the same time. So. I always decide I'm just going to make it simple. I hope I get a few pieces across to each of you. And you have to know I do what you guys do. I, I walk the halls. I don't fly first class. I enjoy myself. I go out at night. I try not to get into trouble. I love the topic of information. Uh, you know it when you share it. Both of us know it. I was in the trade show business. I was in the magazine business. I'm now in the internet space because in the publishing business, we had three assets, people, postage, and printing. The internet allows me to do the same thing. Very few people, no postage, no printing. It has completely changed our world in a very big way. 
So I learn, grow, share, interact, and, and I swear to you, I work a trade show. I'm not a drinker. I don't sit at the bar and drink all night, but I sit there and I listen and I learn and I go to my competitors. I find out who's offering what. Do you guys go by and look at your competitors and talk to them and see what they're doing and really get to know them? You would be amazed how much information you can get from a competitor who will tell you everything, everything. They're just standing there in their booth like this, waiting to talk to someone. Now most of them, and I hope you're an exhibitor, watch this. Most exhibitors, and we watch this over the years for trade shows, they stand there like this behind their booth and they wait. So we have a company called uh, cufflinks.com. We went and I took my younger partner to the show and he stood there waiting. I said, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm waiting for people to come by. I said, no, let someone else do that. Walk around the show with me. And we did 10 times the revenue going to the other booths to work with us and buy and sell our product as he did in the booth selling to the people walking by. There's money to be made doing deals with other people in other booths. You just don't think that. Most people don't think that way. I have grown up in the trade show business, so I really, really, really like it. And I, there's a way to work a show. Um, when we, through trade shows, we look for speakers that are educational and entertaining, but the bigger picture, the bigger picture for all of us, the trade show company, as well as you all, is what's the short-term and long-term outlook of what we're dealing with? Whether it's the affiliate market or leads or ClickBank yesterday, how do we put it together? How do we make it more efficient? How do we make it faster, better, quicker, smarter, cheaper, and make more money? I'm telling you there's a lot more to a trade show than just going, seeing friends, seeing what you can sell, picking up all the giveaways and going home. We had a, uh, in our, one of our magazines when we started, we had a piece I put out. It was called 50 Ways to Work a Trade Show. Drake, my partner's here. Drake, I need to get that and put it on our website so that we can share it. It's really a good piece. And it lists all the different things you can do when you go to a show like this to make money. Ten reasons why I'm here. I've been in the internet business since 94. Who's been in the internet business since that long? Can I ask? Anyone since 94? One, two, three, four, five. Who bought domain names in 1995 or earlier? Anybody? A few. Wow, not many. Yeah, the domain space is interesting. Um, I built up a lot of businesses. Uh, I play in the domain name and the affiliate market. Uh, I did a piece that you know about the book Get Rich Click, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. I went to ClickBank a year and a, year and a half ago and spoke to Neil and Dush, and we cut a deal where you may have seen us on the third floor, and you'll see us again at this show doing videotape interviews of many of you and successful entrepreneurs who make money on the internet. And we did that because the book and what I teach is not about me. It's about how other people are making money. Whether it's domains, leads, pay-per-click, search engine optimization, search engine marketing. So if you've got a great story and you think it's interesting, go to the third floor in the next two days and you'll see one booth in the hallway with a video camera. That's us. And I'll be hanging around there a bunch. And if you would like to tell us your story, we'd love to hear it and we'd love to tape you. We're gonna put them on our website. I use them when I go to television shows. The goal, so you can know, is that if we have enough of these interviews, we think there's a TV show to be had in the stuff that I'm teaching, in the information and, and sharing that I try and do with the world, that this is not a, a, a short-term play. There is a lot of money being made. And the view was cool. I've been on a couple times. I'm on again at the end of the month. There's a lot going on, and we're trying to teach the world about this market. So, um, The book hit the New York Times list, which is fun. I teach others how to build equity versus income. Uh, our companies this year will do $75 million on the Internet. Uh, I spoke about affiliate marketing on The View. We didn't get to see that clip, but I talked about it and explained what it was. And then I added, I'm probably the oldest. Who in the room is over 50? Anybody? Will you admit it? Not many. I'm 50 this year, so... It's rare, I'm the oldest guy. I used to be the youngest guy. And then uh, I don't, I'm free, I didn't charge them to speak, so that's a good thing. We always look for free speakers in the, in the trade show business. It's the only way to save money. 
uh, real quickly, my background was deregulation telecommunications, and I didn't know anything about telecom. I'm a marketer. But I found out, as you guys find out in your business, when you know more than the person you're talking to, you're the expert. So when you're talking to your friends about affiliate marketing, you're the expert. If they're telling friends, they're referring to you as the expert. We, we were on 2020 talking about a voicemail. I was no more the expert than you or you, but I was the one that got through the, pre the line to get them to use a speaker, and I was known as the expert at that point. I got into the uh, information business because buyers need information about sellers. Sellers need information about buyers. And the person in the middle is going to make the money the, in, initially. And if they do their job right and they change with the market, as you all can do, you're always going to be in that income stream. So you're helping A meet B, B meet A, and you're in the middle trying to make money, whether it's per click, whether it's per sell, whether it's per, per whatever. I, in the book, I'm not going to ask how many people have the book. It'd be embarrassing. I don't want to know. I got one. Okay, you can all get the book free. Go to ClickBank over the next three, two days, and they're giving it away. Um, it is really interesting. There are so many ways to make money. We found so many pay per blank that I spent two weeks researching how many different ways are there. And I think, I think we came up with 33 ways to make money, pay per whatever, pay per download, pay per sale, pay per view, pay per click. There are a lot of them. Pay per read. There are companies that do every time you read. The gaming and the porn industry have pay per play. So if you go in and play a game, they can charge you, and the same thing with the adult industry. Any of you know about business.com? Know that story at all? Okay. Uh, I believe domain names are real estate. And in 94, I coined a term that domain names are the real estate of the internet. And I was had a real estate background. And real estate is a really interesting way to make money. But it gets really interesting if you can buy it for $10 and sell it for 10,000. I have sold $22 million worth of domain names. In one day I did 18 million. I sold business.com, which I had paid $150,000 for. I sold it for seven and a half million, and we sold ebusiness.com for 10 million, which we didn't report at the time because they didn't want the media to eat them up because they said that's just ridiculous. We sold, I, think, I don't know if it's in the slideshow or not, we ended up selling business.com, which became, I invested in the company, I got a piece of the stock, and we sold business.com as a business-to-business -business search engine three years ago for $345 million. It started with a domain name. It isn't that I know how to do it. It isn't that you may know, have to do, know how to do it. It's you got to know what you don't know. And then you got to hire your weaknesses. That's in here later. You've got to know what you don't know and hire your weaknesses. I wrote a fool in his money when I bought business.com for $150,000 we dropped a press release without my name because I was afraid what might happen and the headline said a fool and his money were just parted. By the way, the guy who wrote that is the first one I sent the clipping to that said business.com sold for a world record seven and a half million. He was not nice. <laughs> old world, new world. So this is, this is how I see it and, and it's cause, maybe it's because I'm old. You all, a lot of people, how many of you run continuity programs? Anybody? How many of you know what continuity program means, it, per se? Okay, the majority of you don't. In the old world, we had a subscription. You paid me $12 a year, and I booked it as $12. And by the way, you should know this is a tax law. You ask your tax attorney, I only have to take in the income a dollar a month because you're delivered one twelfth of your subscription. If you're taking money and you're delivering your data over time, my tax accountant told me I can, only, I, I can use the money today, but I only have to book it one twelfth a month. That could be the most valuable thing you learn in the next three days. Remember, if you take money today and you're delivering your product or service over a period of time, ask your accountant. My guess is they'll tell you you only have to take that money into operating income for tax purposes one twelfth or one twenty fourth. So 
the new industry, the younger generation, says we have a continuity program. We called it a subscription. They said we have upsell, cross-sell, and downsell. We called that doing business. They use uh, using a real telephone to call a customer and actually talk to them while, while trying to keep them from dropping their continuity program. We call that customer service. This is my stab at humor, okay? <laughs> Leaving a voicemail, we talk to a receptionist. If you do it in reverse. So these days, it's leaving a voicemail. We had to talk to a receptionist in my day. Sending an email, we wrote a letter. Not always. What, the truth is, I was doing business with Microsoft when it was st f uh, started. And I, I had met Bill, and we were doing business with the company, and they said, you cannot do business with us if you don't have an email. What? You can't do business with us if you don't have an email address. We won't talk to you. It's a requirement. That's weird. But at that time, that's what it was. And we all got AOL. No one else knew how to do it. So they didn't have anything at that point outside of that. Outsourcing and staffing. How many of you outsource part of your business? Oh, look at that. I love that. That's amazing. That's the biggest response I've ever had at a speech. That's amazing. Good for you. That's smart. Most companies don't do that, and it gives you a major competitive advantage. I don't care what part, whether it's managing Infusionsoft, which a lot of companies are now doing, because it is complicated, and it might be cheaper and better to outsource that to the receptionist. How many of you know the story that McDonald's, at several locations last year, outsourced the person who was taking the order, and that person was in India? Did you? Very few people know that. It's a very cool concept. And they've tried. Everyone's trying a different way to, to, to lower their cost in this market. Okay. Uh, creating digital-based products, uh, webinars, teleseminars, downloading ebooks. these were expenses to us. And the funny thing is, if you go to talk to any company that's been around longer than 15 years, they have such legacy systems in place that what you see on the right is still a lot of it. And of course, not writing a letter, right? But they're not outsourcing. They don't understand it. They do have major expenses that they can do a better way. It's your job to figure out ways to make it easier, better, and smarter for them. So today, I want you to take, if you have a few takeaways. Company thought process versus entrepreneur process. I try and teach how to create equity, not how to create income. Now, income is often derived from how much you make. But equity is the game, y'all. I'm from Texas. I can say y'all. <laughs> equity is the name of the game. It really is. You want to create a product or a service or create a database that has a value to someone else. That's what you're really going for. You're making money with this plate that you're spinning over here. And over here, you're spinning a plate that says, how much equity am I creating for others so that when I want to sell it, they will buy it. We're dealing that right now with, with one of our companies. It's a big company, makes a lot of money, but do we want to grow the top line or do we want to grow the bottom line? So we are actually asking this week, investment bankers here in New York, are we better off growing the top line even if we don't grow the bottom line or do we just need to grow the bottom line and have more profit because that's what they want a multiple of? People buy companies based on one of two options, profit or top line value, because they can marry it into their business. You all in this business will see massive, massive deals being done in the next three to four years where companies come together because they have figured out you're doing the same as you're doing the same as you're doing, let's put them together. One of my predictions is that you'll see LeedsCon and Affiliate Summit come together, but don't tell anybody. That's one of my guesses. I was here last year, and I said, why don't these two sh firms' shows get together and do two or three other shows, put them under one roof, so we can go to one massive show for four days instead of multiple shows? It's an interesting concept. That's a roll-up, and I, I like that business. Um, I consider there are four keys to being rich, which I will go into. That's a takeaway. I said in the video there are only seven ways to get rich, and I defy anybody to tell me one way other than these seven. You inherit it. You invest, you marry, which some people do. I didn't. You work for it, 
You get lucky or win it. I had a maid win 21 million in the lottery in Texas. She quit. <laughs> That's true, she quit. Uh, you can break the, break the law or you can be an entrepreneur. And I don't know if there are too many other ways, but I haven't heard of a whole lot of other ways. If you have one, tell me after the speech, I wanna know. I believe two big issues in any successful business, and I'm here to talk about just in general, building a successful business. Hiring your weaknesses is really important. You have to know what you don't know. I don't know how to be a CPA, I have the best CPA. I don't know how tech, I have the best tech guy, Drake, who's in the back. I don't know legal, so I try and get the best lawyers I can to do the deals. And I'm gonna give you a real interesting insight. One $50,000 person is better than two $25,000 people. If you don't know that, you'll learn the hard way. Trust me, hire the best you can afford and you'll do better than hiring multiple bodies to have to manage. I created this slide, corporate versus entrepreneurs, because it is a different mindset. It is a different way to think. And I wanted to kind of put it under one umbrella. I do this more for me, and then I share it with you, because it's the way I think. Uh, there's a human resources department, and most of us entrepreneurs say, we're just gonna hire them. Uh, we have downsizing and right-sizing at the big companies, and the little companies say, we're gonna fire them. The corporate culture, flip-flops and t shirt That's most of you that work at home. I know, I've seen it. I've visited some of you guys. Execute a defined plan, they just do it. Accounting department, cash, baby, we want cash. Planning ahead, I won't repeat that, oh shit, what now? There's a lot of that, a lot of that. A lot, not a lot of planning at the, at the small companies. Uh, they have an IT department, we use Bob, or in my case, Drake. Uh, they have strategy sessions, the little guys flip a coin. Forecasting, what? That's true. These are true. And the number one difference, some have a management structure and some have me, one or two people, and that's the way they think. You can't sell me. When I went to sell my first company, I had a uh, magazine on the privately owned pay telephone business. Honest to God. And you, you think, what in the world would anyone wanna know about that? But in any market, buyers need sellers, sellers need buyers, and the one who puts them together and has information about both parties wins and there were a lot of ads in fact we had more ads than we did editorial and I had to look for things to write about and it is a really interesting concept when you go to sell it the investment bankers go what are you selling I said well we have a database we have advertisers and we have a small group of people that manage the company I said but you have your picture in the masthead every month in the masthead every month and we can't buy it because you run the company. Replace yourself, put others in the company so that you're not so required and this company is not based around you. Systems are in place. How many of you think we need to set up a system to operate X? Yes? That's the only way to think to build a long-term recurring revenue, income producing, sellable company. It's really true, it's really, really, really true. Oh, no audio, do we have audio? Great job on the printing. I'm Amanda. Here, wait, let's go back and see if we can get it. Ah, no. Okay. Okay, now let's see. Good news, my Phoenix office. This is the entrepreneur. The meeting went great. They love the company. presentation. Judy, great job on the printing. I'm Amanda. Tom, James. Nice job on our brochures and letterhead. Lewis, keep up the good work with our shipments. It's, it's Peter. Great job, everybody. That's a closet. You know what, guys? Take the afternoon off. We can't. That is why I hired you. World's proudest boss. We understand you can never have too much help. Okay, that I don't know about us. you, but that's how small companies operate in this country right now. We have a little better system, but not a whole lot. But it's kind of the way we think. So if you guys, a lot of you are exhibitors, if you're selling to small companies, they want to hear how you can help them solve a problem. That's what they need. Solve this, I don't want to deal with it. The same way you think, how do I solve that and get it off my plate? 
The same way the person in the hotel says, I'm going to transfer you to someone else, which isn't the right answer most of the time in a hotel. In your business and anyone walking up to your booth, there's, of course, how do I make money with what you sell? But the real answer is, how can you help me get what I want? Find out what they want. Ask them some questions. Ask them questions. Do any of you have a corporate mandate in a booth? When they walk up, we need to know X, Y, and Z before we tell them about what we do. Anybody? Wow, that's just bizarre to me. It has to be. You have to know who they are, what they're looking for to, in order to sell them what you have. You have to at least act like you're interested. Research. I am a researchaholic to the point that my staff says, enough research. We can go forward. No, no, no. We need to research more. Planning. I, as an entrepreneur, I didn't have the money to lose. And I'm one of those gamblers in Las Vegas that when I'm up $500, I still bet my $10 bet. I don't bet 100 now that I'm up 500. I look at planning as know how to plan, hope for the upside, right? Plan worst case scenario for the low side, no matter how bad things could be, plan 10% lower than that and expect it to come in in the middle because that's where you'll probably come in. I always hope for the best, plan for the worst and hope it comes where it's somewhere in the middle. Learning, I have a trademark term Learn more, earn more. That is why you're here. That is why you meet each other. Do y'all go to the meat market? The, is it meat market? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Those are great. You can meet more people in there and say, I've already made my show because I met X, Y, and Z because you took the time not to sell but to meet. And somehow when you meet people and know what they do, there's more to be done with that individual than just trying to sell them. So learning, I'm a big, big player on learning. And a management team and a management structure. It doesn't matter if you're a one-person shop or five people. If you want to build up a company to sell to others, you really, really must think, how do I build something that others want to buy and they're going to want to buy a team and systems? People and systems. They don't care about much else. They need to know that they're not screwing up. You know, an advertising company, when we were selling ads, this is good for my friends over here from Success Magazine, when you're selling ads and you go to an ad agency, it doesn't matter how good your pitch is, they can't fail. If you don't give them a reason to prove that they have made a good decision and that metrics show that they've made a good decision, they have a tendency not to place the media because they could potentially be liable for the screw up. The goal is not to screw up. And they don't want to screw up and they can't afford to screw up. So you give them reasons to help them understand how to do it right and hope that you can get them to understand what your solution is makes them look good. Research the game you're playing in. Now. Forgive me, I do call it a game. It is a game. It's a business, but it's a game. And I spent more time learning about my competition than I did spending time in my booth. I could spend time in my booth with my staff all the time. I could do it in the evening at dinner. I could do it beforehand or at lunch. I spend all trade shows learning what others are doing because I can take back that knowledge and leverage it later. So it's whether it's products or services or competitive pricing. See what others are doing. There are people doing things upstairs that you can use and you don't realize you can use it. So that's knowing what you don't know. I know after 20 years, 30 years, gosh, walking trade shows, 20, I'll do 20 shows a year, by the way. I'll do 20 shows a year. I have, you know the bags of, of junk? They're all over my office. They're still in bags. And I haven't opened them, but I know they're there. But I have as much as I can, and then I get home and I data dump on the staff so that they can leverage it and use it in the business. Boy, this is one that's it's embarrassing to say, but it's so true. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. It is, it is true. In this market especially, I know things are changing fast. You're in a relatively good space. The, the affiliate market is great. It is my favorite niche on the Internet. But you have to plan 
growth, income, the whole bit. And if you, you ever think if you run out of money, what do I do the next day? You gotta think, what if? And in this economy, none of us know. And if you do, let me know. Because we have to plan every day, and Drake and I, my partner, we're thinking six months and 12 months out every day. We never think about tomorrow, per se. Learn sooner versus later. You know, this is one for the information marketing folks that I will use when I start trying to sell products for, for the book. You know, the, the concept behind a book is that you do a book, you make a, two bucks a book, but then you sell other information products. And we aren't doing it yet because I'm not in a hurry to do it. I'd rather wait as long as it takes and do it right. But the concept is pretty simple. Anything you're selling, if it helps people today, it has more value to them now at $100 than it does in six months at $50. Because in six months, the opportunity may be gone. You need to use time value of money and the quick changing technology market to sell people on why they need your product, why they need your affiliate link, why yours is better. Because things change, you can have it now, and you're set as opposed to waiting to see. It's the old, should I wait for the next iPad or the next iPhone? I get them the minute they come out because I always find something on there that I might be able to use in thinking about new ways to do my business. And there's a real difference in learning about something and understanding it. Truly, truly understanding how does that work. And there are a lot of you I'll see in the booths or I'll, uh, friends of mine here that are in the, in the industry and I'll say, how'd you do that? And they'll tell me, I said, I don't understand. How, how do you do that? And they'll tell me, and I look, I don't mean to, to feel, be stupid, but I'm kind of dumb when it comes to some of this. Exactly what do I do step by step? I want to understand it to the point that I can teach it. You know, they say you don't really understand it unless you're able to teach it. Do you feel like some of the stuff you learn you're able to teach? That's the way I look at it and the way I profess it in my own organizations. This is my favorite question in the slideshow. How many of you know the short-term value, the long-term value, and the lifetime value of a client? Raise your hand. Really? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're late. Ten. Oh my goodness. One of, my, one of our companies, the, the CEO can't answer it. How can you get clients? How can you buy clients? How can you do pay-per-click? How can you do pay-per-lead? How can you afford to do a show if you don't know the value of that client? Now, I understand, I really do understand the internet's changing and things will change and we don't know the income stream, we don't know how much we can charge, but you gotta know what you don't know and I'm telling you, you gotta know the answer to those three questions. I'll give you an example. If I know at cufflinks.com that I make one sale and you buy and I make $30 and I learned that over the next year you'll make three sales and I'll make $90 and over the next three years I'll make $300, I'm making it up, $300 over a three year period. On average, I have to average it out. Based on the time value of money, and you do a, kind of a regression analysis to say, what's the value of that client to me today? Let's throw up a number, $50. When the CEO says to me, I'm paying $1.13 per click, and I go, why aren't you paying up to $15? And he says, well, why? I said, well, you just showed me the value, and these aren't the real numbers, they're not. But if the client's worth X, and we know over time, you have to manage what am I paying to get that client today? What's it worth in a year and in three years? Now, I learned this by watching my friends sell out in the telecommunications business for billions, B, billions, billions, because they knew something I didn't understand. They knew it's better for me to borrow money, build up my company today, pay back the money, and now I'm getting a bigger lifetime value for those clients because I have more clients and I can charge a different price. I didn't understand that. 
And I'm telling you, the most important slide you'll see out of my presentation is this one. Know the value short-term, long-term, lifetime. I promise you, it's eye-opening. It's eye-opening. Income versus equity. Income is cash today. Equity is long-term value. And the time value of money changes that as well. Now, the problem with this equation is things change in the trade show business with Sean. I relate to his business because I was in the business. He said to me, and it's true, we have to wait till this year's show to book next year's show because we don't know until the day of how many of y'all are showing up, how much money we make, how much the rooms are overfilled or underfilled, how many are in the ballroom, did the AV people do their job, et cetera, et cetera. We have to plan 12-month cycles. It's, it's a tough business. If you're at the Javits Center and you have a lot of people, you know you're at the Javits Center. You can book two and three years out. What does your business require you to do when it comes to time value of money, whether you're growing it today or tomorrow? You have to think this way to build up a, a serious size organization to sell. I do a little bit of future stuff. I'm not a futurist per se, but I look at the market in the internet as picks and shovels, turning consumers into mar merchants, meaning those are two different thoughts, excuse me. Picks and shovels. We are in the picks and shovel stage. I don't care what anyone tells you, we are still in the picks and shovel stage of the internet. Anyone who's out there that's created a new system, that's a system that was just like picks and shovels in the gold rush. We're still in it. You're in the bottom of the first inning. I don't care what analogy you use. We are very, very early when it comes to what's going on online and how that's going to change our world. So I'll give you an example. I wonder if I don't know if I'm jumping, my, jumping the gun. I'll give you a, an example. If I run it, into it in a minute, I, I apologize. How many of you know about interactive television and what's coming? Anybody? This lady? Happened, oh, pretty good. For those of you who don't know, here's an example you can go tell your family tonight. In three years, I have seen this work, so it may come out in two years. You'll watch a TV show like Friends. You'll see the, is it Louboutin shoes? Louboutin? I don't know. The, the ladies know. You'll see a pair of shoes. I have five daughters. I should know that. Based on what they spend, I should know it. The, the, the shoes with the red on the bottom, isn't that what they're called? Yeah. You'll see a pair of shoes on the show. You'll stop the show. You'll put the mouse over the shoes. You'll click the shoes. It'll open up where they're available. You'll click the price, and tomorrow morning it'll be at your front door. Holy shit. That's cool. Now, I'm telling you that's coming. 100%. How can you make money out of that idea? Think about it. It is going to happen. Now, the, I think the guy who creates the database of all the products and marries it to all the local affiliates, which is probably Google, is going to make all the money. Is anyone doing this for the affiliate space? I bet. Oh, you are? This guy is. It's a really interesting concept, and it's one that you should look at because all the things we're playing with now are fun. That's a game changer in a very, very meaningful way. And so I like to think... What's coming? How do I play in it? How will it change the market? Go into the exhibit booths and ask people who are in that space. They'll teach you, and then you take that information and figure, how do I leverage it in my business? Most of the Internet gurus that I hang out with will tell you that turning consumers into merchants is the next big thing. The little... Uh, Forgive me, what's it, Drake, what's it called? The little thing you put on your iPhone, you can swipe a credit card? Square. Square. Forgive me. God, I should know that. I sound old. Oh. Square is a game changer. And everyone is saying that I talk to, think about turning consumers into merchants. Your industry is leading that effort. As an industry, you all should be talking about, in a, in a high-level sense, John and, and Sean and the, t you know, the top movers and shakers, what do we want to tell the world about our industry and how do we get it across so we're all saying basically the same thing. We did that in the old days because we knew if we could have a concerted effort on what we're trying to say about our product, our service, in this case our industry, we all benefit. 
So teaching people that domain names are real estate was what you got because of me teaching the group that we did in the domain industry to teach the world. So we were all saying domain names are real estate, and they are in a world where we're trying to get mind share. I want you to remember when you want to buy cufflinks, you go to cufflinks.com. It's mind share. So turning consumers into merchants, figure out how you can play in that space. I, when I was on the, the show and, and several others, I'm doing one Tuesday here in New York. And I like to talk about turning consumers into merchants. And the simplest example is how do we make money with social media? So I go, okay, in any sale you have a buyer and you have a seller and a product. There's a thing called affiliate marketing. They will give you a code and then if someone wants to buy the product, you click on it. So if you have a Facebook or a Twitter list or an email list or even a YouTube following, you promote this code to that audience and you can make money. Now forgive me, I don't know your terms of service, I don't know that everyone allows that, but in a general sense, that's a pretty good way to explain what is affiliate marketing. And they really like that, by the way. They get that. It resonates. Stop thinking U.S., think world. This is obvious. I have to tell you I don't know the answer, so I will ask. I don't mind asking. I'm not embarrassed. Is affiliate marketing still in your world? Raise your hand if you primarily play U.S., and then I'm going to ask world. U.S.? Okay, world? It actually, it's about the same number. Most of you didn't answer. I don't know how that will change, but think how do we create affiliate marketing on a worldwide basis as opposed to U.S. basis? Is there someone doing translation services for affiliate marketing that is in, in, a, in a, uh, a digital based product or service so that you can sell in Korea? I don't know, but it's an obvious example of a way to expand your market and not have to do a lot of work to do it. I like to be the guy who creates the company that does the translation because that's a, that's a, a pick and shovel business. I love, I did have it on here, video on the internet. The future is interactive television. How many of your companies have a YouTube channel? All right, the rest of you need to learn at this show how and why. Why is real simple. Interactive television is going to change your world, big, fast. What if you have no videos on YouTube, and I'm your competitor, and I have 6,000 videos about my process, my customer service, how to, how to, and why. Who, what, when, where, why, how, and how much. Don't you want to have those videos in the can, hope that they're still current in a year or two, but make them so they're applicable so that when interactive television is there and my wife is surfing and she wants to know, wow, I really like that person, there's a button up there that says, watch how we made it. Or watch the effort into, what I, how I learned this was a Rolex watch. They put up a video how they made the Rolex watch. Now what's coming is a code on the back of the Rolex watch or a QR code that I can click and watch my watch being made. Y'all think that way? That's a reality. They're going to put QR codes or something similar that hasn't been created yet on everything. And you'll be able to watch how and have all your questions answered. Think that way. Start to create your videos now and imagine you have your own TV channel. We set up at my house a room to do video simply because I am a strong believer and I'm betting on my own with my own money we need to create videos and lots of them because I'll be able to reach kind of on a leveraged basis. You know, right now it's kind of like this and I hope to hit it. But when interactive video comes out and anyone can find me on television, it'll hockey stick up. And you'll watch those that have video in the can ready to go scream past their competitors. We don't sell anything that you can benefit from at this point, but we're going to have products. If you have any interest in finding out more, my, uh, we're here. We're on the third floor on, in the hallway. Thank you to Sean and Missy because we're doing those videos, and we're going to have some form of an affiliate marketing 
$1,500 webinar. We've never marketed anything for me or this brand outside of a book. Um, the book is sold. It has been sold this week to Simon & Schuster. And they're going to relaunch the book in 20 countries because they want to teach people about what's in here. And by the way, there's a lot in here on affiliate marketing. I'm not selling you the book. I'm giving you the book. All you have to do is go by ClickBank in the next couple days. We do domain names. These are domain names I own. Bachelor.com, Photographer.com, Heart Disease, Beauty Products, Tech Toys, Consulting. We build out domain names. And if you're an expert at building out domain names and think you could take one of those and build them out, tell us. We'd love to talk to you because that's fun to me, finding out how we joint venture on some of our assets. I love this. I want to share it. Can you turn down the lights at all? He's going to run up and try and do it. Can everyone see it? I ran across that last year and I just, most people haven't seen it. I think it's really interesting. I am an entrepreneur. I feel, I feel like I'm an AA. I am an entrepreneur. <laughs> there should be. That's a good idea, by the way. That's a good idea. Create great stories, tips, tricks to share. If you have any of that, if you have a story, come by our booth, tell us. Uh, we may just put you in a, in a video. Uh, video team, it's actually it's the third floor. And uh, we're doing, I, I don't know if we're doing the video testimonials after. Uh, last slide. If you want a free copy of the book, go buy ClickBank. They'll give you one. I'm in the booth signing uh, 11, Drake? 11. 11 o'clock on Monday and Tuesday. Happy to talk to you. Anything. Anything regarding business or uh, just good ideas. I'm all over the board, but that's my ADD. What can I tell you? And uh, I think that's it. If you have any questions, let me know.